What's going on guys, King Strats here, back into the video on the channel. And today we have something that I used to do all the time, but since I've been doing YouTube, I kind of got away from. Sushi really doesn't do well uh, for videos. A lot of people don't eat sushi. It's not something that people usually can relate to, but this restaurant was one of my favorite sushi restaurants. And there is a reason that I was doing it that I'll get into in a second, but it's called Green Dragon. It's located in Fairlawn, New Jersey. High ratings all across the board. 4.4 on Google of about 450 plus ratings. Now, they don't just do sushi. As you can see, I got one of my favorite noodles. These noodles I get all the time, as well as a different meal that I never tried before. But a couple of weeks ago, uh, I got wind from one of my friends that the restaurant had an accident, more or less an SUV plowed into the restaurant and it injured two people. They're okay. Fortunately, no one was hurt more than that. Um, but, you know, they, they have to obviously renovate. There's a big mess and there were people eating in the restaurant at the time. So they are going through a few things right now. So they are managed now that a few weeks have passed that they are open for takeout. And I wanted to go and support, so I got a meal from there. Um, Green Dragon is one of my favorite places, but I'm going to go through some of these. Of course, I'm going to be unbiased with my ratings. Um, I do have to say that I had some of these meals where I do like the place, but I wanted to support, like I said, drop a thumbs up. You know, everybody's okay, but with these small businesses, things like that, and I know people are going to say, okay, they have insurance, but it can mess things up from a business standpoint. So of course I did want to show my support. So we got our green dragon today and I am super excited to try this. Got two of my favorite sushi rolls. One of the rolls I never got before and I got some rice specialty. It's a basil shrimp fried rice. I've never tried it before, but I wanted to start with, if you guys don't know, I'm the one of the biggest fans of Singapore May Fun. I've had a lot of people over the years message me saying that they, I was the reason that they tried it and they really loved it. Singapore May Fun, it, May Fun is a rice noodle, really, really thin. I stirred this up just a little bit just so it kind of, you know, it was in the takeout container, but it has all of the types of protein, uh, shrimp, pork, chicken, and it has a like spicy, but not too spicy kind of curry flavor to it. But I, first time I tried it was at this place and it was what I fell in love with. And I've been getting it at every restaurant that serves it ever since. You can look through my videos. It's not a joke, but I wanted to go back and get one of my OGs, one of my Singapore May Fun. I love their noodles, not too greasy, not oily or anything like that. Just good, good flavor on here. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, man. You get a ton of shrimp in here as well. There's your chicken. There's your pork. Just enough spice on here where you're not going to be crying while you're eating it like people think I'm doing anyway. Mm. I've had a lot of single premier fun over these last few years. But this still and always will be how much you get to. One of my favorites. Mm-mm. So glad they're back making good food again because I would have missed this for sure. 9.6. This is a basil shrimp fried rice, and according to the description, which I have over here, I'm not gonna lie, I'm cheating. It has shrimp, mango, basil, egg, and vegetables in it. I'm not the biggest fan of mango, but we try everything here, and you know, you never know what you like these days. The first thing I notice is the color. The fried rice, it doesn't have like a crazy different color to it. Sometimes you get fried rice, but I know they make it from scratch. This, okay, we got a mango here. Oh, there's the basil. There we go. It's a little basil. Or basil, depending on where you're from. That basil is really good. It's like Thai basil. It's very fragrant. You can like, it's got a very strong taste. What really makes this good? Wow. Maybe I like mango. The mango adds a little bit of sweetness to it. This 
Hmm. I've done pineapple and I really like it. The mango is even sweeter, but not citrusy. So it's a different kind of flavor. The biggest thing I've noticed, and I've, I've started saying this, I haven't said it 14 times already, but I'm gonna try to make my point because I always cut myself off by eating. Put the food down then. This is the lightest fried rice I think I've had. It's definitely fried. But the texture and the taste almost is light like steamed rice, but it doesn't have that same stickiness that stream steamed rice has. Obviously, they're going to use a different like grain of rice maybe. But This is one of the few fried rices I've had that, like, it would pair well with a lot of different things. The mango is what brings it together. The only thing for me that's missing, and this is just a personal taste bud thing, I think when you get Thai food, because that's what reminds me of with that Thai basil, that the spice level adds another layer of flavor to it. So you've got the sweetness from the rice but it's missing that spicy flavor that i would like now i know if i just added like a hot sauce to this to make it spicier i would give it even higher of a rating but by itself it's missing that extra layer in my opinion still like it but that would have made me love it and i don't have hot sauce next to me and i'm not getting up not today it's being real so I'll give it a seven and a half out of 10. And don't get me wrong. When I give something a seven and a half, that means it's good. If I give something an eight and a half, nine, that's when it gets to like, oh man, this is crazy good. Where this is something that if I got it, I'd be like, oh, it was good, it was good. If that makes sense. I always try to explain ratings just in case somebody's new and they don't really know where I'm coming from. This is a roll that I'm gonna show you right now because a lot of you don't like sushi or you've never tried it or you're interested in trying it. When I first started getting sushi, I did not get the raw fish when I got rolls. Anything that's called a roll is going to have rice and usually nori, which is a seaweed wrapper. Sometimes they'll use different things like avocado or rice paper, but those are the usual basic things that you get in a roll. Inside of that usually will be some sort of vegetable and then a raw fish. Like tuna, which is what you see over here, or salmon, yellowtail are the most popular, but there are other ones. Eel, you name it. When I first went, I used to go with my dad. And I was afraid to try those things, but I wanted to try a roll. So I got two different kinds of rolls, and this one was one of them. This one right here is a sweet potato roll. There's no fish in it whatsoever. What it has is a tempura fried sweet potato. So I'm going to show you that also. Side note, before I even get into this, anybody who's new, don't make fun of the way I hold chopsticks. I've talked about this a few times. I had finger injuries when I was a college football player. So both of my pinkies bend in ways that they're not supposed to bend. So every time I'm holding it, I don't have like that to keep this. So sometimes they get crisscross. If that's the worst thing that happens to me as an athlete, I'll take it. But anyway, here's the sweet potato roll. Let me pop back in here. Got to move these apart because they do get stuck together when you're holding them in these takeout ones. I'm going to try to get this sideways. There we go. So, you see that? It's a tempura fried sweet potato. I'm going to try to. Here you go. So, it's a tempura fried sweet potato. And then there's a, like, a, a sweet sauce on the top with steamed rice, of course, and then the nori, the seaweed. So it gives you the taste and texture that you would get from sushi, but not the fish flavor that you might be afraid of. It's how I started until I graduated into getting the raw fish. So here is a sweet potato roll. They're very common at places that serve sushi now, for the reasons that I just said. The sweet potato obviously has a little bit of sweetness to it because it's a sweet potato, duh. And a little bit of a crunch you get from the tempura and then the rice. What really makes these is the quality of the sauce that you get on the top. So that sauce right there kind of gives you another layer of flavor. I love layers when I get my food. That gives you a bit of like a soy teriyaki kind of note to it that I just think is really, really enjoyable. Even when I get sushi like this now, I still will get a sweet potato roll because I just really like them. And this one, the tempura isn't soggy. It's not too breaded where it's overly crunchy or something like that. Sometimes you do get that from places like that. And the sauce, this one looks really sauce. I'm just gonna grab this one right here real quick. Don't make fun of my fingers, bro. Don't make fun of them. Right there, that sauce. 
is a W sauce. They did a nice sauce on this one. Mm. As far as sweet potato rolls go, it's one of my more favorite. That a word? That a phrase? Might be. Doesn't matter. I'm going with it. We give that an eight and a half out of ten. And then I eventually graduated to getting what is still what I'm getting a basic roll. So this is a specialty roll, which I'll show you in a second. Basic rolls used to just have some kind of fish, rice, and whatever kind of like sauce or something on there. So a spicy tuna crunch roll. So the spicy tuna crunch roll. I'll show you the bottom. So that is a spicy tuna. What they do is they chop up the raw fish. I know for some people, I get it. And they add a spicy mayo to it, as well as a crunch, which you can't really see on here. But there's these little flakes of like tempura batter that give it a little bit of a crunchy texture to it. I love that texture when you're getting sushi. And then on the top is real simple, just a spicy mayo. It's usually QP mayo, which is like a little bit of a whole egg kind of mayo, so a little bit thicker, a little bit sweeter. And that's what you get predominantly in sushi. So this is the spicy tuna roll, which I've always loved from here, which I still love from here, which is delicious. When the more sushi you get, the more you start to say, okay, this fish is fresh, this fish isn't. This fish is fresh. They've always taken pride in that kind of stuff, and that's why I've gone there, because their fish quality matters when you're getting raw fish. And they have it. Now, I can't I'm going through like a, a sushi, a little bit of a tutorial going on, which I didn't really plan, but most people, when you're going to a traditional sushi place, when I say traditional, I mean like when the chef kind of gives you one, and they tell you you're not supposed to put anything on it. Traditionally, you're not supposed to dunk your sushi in soy sauce or anything like that, but there's a few different ways that people will eat it. I'll show you the first way. That is just taking your sushi when you put it in your chopstick and just dunking it in the soy, which is what a lot of people do. So they'll just take it, right? They have a little container here. Usually in the restaurant, you pour it yourself. They just get a little dunk so it gets on the bottom like that. And then boom. Personally, that's not how I eat it. The second way is with this wasabi. Now, wasabi is very strong. You've seen videos of people just eating it. It has a very horseradishy kind of, it'll clear out your sinuses. Two ways people do it. One, they'll break pieces off and they put it on each individual piece or within the roll. The second is they'll take it, like you just saw me do right there, they'll grab a bunch of wasabi and they'll just throw it in here in the sushi and they stir it up so that it gets incorporated throughout the soy. Then, like I just did before, they take their sushi roll, boom, you dunk it in. That's how I used to eat it. I think that is the best way if you're going to do the sushi dunk method. Now, third, there's this pickled ginger that you have on the side. With the pickled ginger, what a lot of people do is you eat it in between. It's supposed to be a palate cleanser. Almost like pickled radish when you eat Korean wings and things like that. I'm weird. So I'm going to show you what I do. I actually like the flavor of the pickled ginger. I don't know if it's because I'm part West Indian and ginger is just something that I really, really like to eat. But I put it actually on top of each individual sushi roll. And then I'll go in here like this. Then you get like that. Or I usually would put wasabi on each individual one and a little bit of soy sauce on each individual one and then put the pickled ginger on the top like this and then eat it. For purposes of not having to spend that much time doing that, I'm just going to dunk it in here because that is the ultimate way that I like to eat the regular, as they call it, rolls. Just like this. I felt that. Not traditional, but very popular. Just wanted to lay out your options. Their fish is really fresh. I really do enjoy it, and I think it's delicious. A lot of pickled ginger on this one. I don't care. Let's go. A lot of crunch in that one. That right there is the crunch that you see here. In case you needed a close up. Maybe you didn't. But I still love these rolls. I think they're very good. I just prefer the specialty rolls. I would give this an 8.5 out of 10 as well. Now, specialty rolls are much more expensive. Usually one of these sushi rolls run you about 6 or $7. Sometimes I see them as high as 10 depending on where you go. A specialty roll, this is one. So you get a big amount of fish and whatever they have on here as well. 
but they'll usually run you anywhere between this. I've seen them as cheap as 12 or $13 and as high as 20 to $25, depending on where you go, where you're eating, and what you get. A lot of different places have different names for them. There are some that are more traditional, like a volcano roll and things like that, but this one is particular to them, and they call it a North Jersey roll. So let me give you a cross section of what this bad boy looks like. So there's a lot going on on here, but don't be too alarmed. What you see is spicy yellowtail, crunch, which is the stuff I explained before, and asparagus instead of avocado or cucumber. A lot of them do use asparagus as well on the inside. Top with salmon, tuna, jalapeno, and scallions. So that is what is on the top as well. So there's a lot going on in these. These things are really filling, but I usually will get one of them when I go to a sushi restaurant. There we go. Look how big this thing is. That's damn good, man. The fish is super fresh. You can tell. It doesn't have a fishy taste. doesn't have an aftertaste. doesn't have anything like that. Now, if you've never had it before, it's going to be a little bit different of a texture. If you notice, when you eat a sushi roll, you put the whole thing in your mouth. You don't bite a piece and take it away. whole thing goes in. Stop it. I love the kick you get from the jalapeno, the crunch you get <clears throat> from the asparagus, and then the freshness of the fish. They're really, really filling. With specialty rolls, I don't usually do the soy sauce or anything like that because there's enough. I will do the pickled ginger sometimes and just throw that on top. I feel like I went to a sushi restaurant with y'all. Like we sat down, I was like, okay, and you never had sushi before? Let me show you how I get down. Stuck. Boom. That's so good. Mm. I think this might be the best one I've had from them. As far as what roll. And I've gotten a lot of these over the years. Sushi Sunday for me was a thing. I did it every year or every week when I was just doing Instagram. I would just take a picture or a video of the sushi, explain it to it, and then go eat dinner by myself. I wasn't filming anything back then. When I started doing YouTube, I got away from doing the sushi again because it doesn't really film well. A lot of people don't eat sushi, but I wanted to do this because of the, the situation that they were in. It kind of give them a little bit of support and, and you know, buy some food. I don't know why I just ate that, I just wanted to try it again. But these for me, 9.2 out of 10, I really, really like them. I know everybody watching these come from a different place, different area, all over the world at this point, which is really, really cool. I can't speak on anyone's behalf and I can't speak about other countries. But here in the US, when it comes to me loving food, being a foodie, small businesses, like this one and the ones I've been doing for two years now are the lifeblood of the food industry in my opinion of food in general and just of business in general I love corporate places when it comes to like franchises you know I eat there I like to try different things and it's something that we can all share together because if I go to a larger corporate type of place there's a high chance that you have one as well as me so I still will do that but I will never go away from supporting these small businesses of family-owned type of places that put their heart and soul into what they do. To me, the thing that franchise restaurants can't duplicate is the love that they put in their food, the passion they have for their food, why they care and, and what they're about what they're doing and the pride they take in it. Most of the times you go to these small businesses, these family-owned places, it's the same three or four faces you go and see every single time where they're in there every single time, opening, closing, cleaning, they're in the restaurant with everybody else, you know, making sure everything's okay, and you develop relationships with these people, they know you over the years, and in turn, they can make a living about it. And I've always been a supporter of that, and I will always continue to do so. So, no matter where you're from, if you see a small business, and you've never had it before, it's how my YouTube channel became a thing. Just go in, try it. Ask them, they'll tell you, they're excited to see customers. 
ask them, hey, what's what's the most popular thing here? What do you suggest? Just take a bite. And you never know. You might find a place that you eat at for years. And a lot of people aren't from Jersey, where I'm from. And they're like, man, I wish I lived here. I wish I had the food you had. 90% of these places that I do, I don't even know exist until I go and try. I, I don't, it's not like I'm going in with inside information. I'm finding places and saying, okay, let's try it. And it turns out that some of these places are hidden gems. And in turn, it, it can possibly help them to get more business and continue to, to own and operate. So if you're, I don't care if you're in Kentucky, you're in a small town, there's a little restaurant there, just go in and try them. You never know how good some of these places are and how much they care about the customer. And I've talked about this for the last few videos. When it comes to corporate places, they provide things at competitive prices. They're brands you trust. I get that stuff. I eat these places. But they don't care about you. We all know it. You're a dollar to them. To these places, you're more than a dollar. As a person who's run a small business for a pretty decent amount of time, it's always, it's never about just the money. It's about the service, about the satisfaction you get from giving somebody a good service, and in this case, good food. So support your local businesses, man. Try them out. And if you run one, I hear you, I see you, and I love you. Thank you for doing what you do. Because if it wasn't for you, this channel wouldn't exist, and I wouldn't get to do the things that I'm doing. I am not the star of this. This is the star of this. It's the food. It's not just me. So... Keep doing what you're doing, man. And hopefully, no matter where you are, I don't care where you are, if we continue to, to, to grow on the channel, I can come visit you no matter where you're at. I don't care if you're in the upper northwest corner of Canada, which is probably cold as hell, but you might have something here that's fire. And I'm coming. I hope so. God willing. So keep supporting them and keep supporting me, and we can continue to make this happen. But that's going to be the end of the video. I'm going to go watch The Last of Us because about that time is Sunday night. It's a good show if you haven't checked it out, by the way. Also a good video game, which I'm going to be playing on stream starting tonight after I watch the show. So if you haven't seen it, twitch.tv, King Shrats, you already know your boy. I'm also on TikTok. I stream there as well, but they had an issue with the app. Doesn't matter. So come check me out. We can come have a conversation, chop it up. A lot of you have, and if you have, thank you. And if you haven't, and you're here watching me, thank you anyway. But like I said, it's going to be the end of the video. We'll be back tomorrow. More content, man. I love y'all. The hand signs. They made it to YouTube.